Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 8 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss data access in MVC using Entity Framework. Please watch part 7 before proceeding with this video. Now, the controller responds to a URL request, gets data from a model, and then hands the data over to the view. The view will then render the data. Model can be either entities or business objects. And if you remember, in part 7 of this video series, we have built this employee entity which is going to act as the model in our MVC application. And if you remember, this employee entity is actually residing within the models folder of our MVC application. So here we have this employee class with this four auto-implemented properties. And within the employee controller class, look at this, we're actually uh, creating an instance of this employee object. And notice that the employee data is actually hard-coded within this controller action method. And then we are passing this employee object to the view for rendering. Okay, But in reality, we actually retrieve the employee data from a database table. So here I have this table TBL employee. So we want to retrieve data from this table and then build our employee model object and then hand that employee model object to the view which will then render that uh, employee. Okay, so let's see how to retrieve employee data using Entity Framework. Now, if you remember, your models can be either entities or business objects. In this video, we're going to use this employee entity and we're going to retrieve data using Entity Framework. In a later video session, we're going to discuss using business objects as our models. If you remember, business objects contain both state and behavior. Okay, so obviously, uh, in this video, we are going to use Entity Framework to retrieve data from this table TBL employee. Obviously, to do that, the first step is to install the Entity Framework. And the easiest way to do that is by using a NuGet Package Manager. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Click on Tools. Select Library Package Manager. Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. So this should open up NuGet Package Manager. And look at this. At the moment, it's showing, it's showing all the packages that's that's are, uh, that are available for installation. Now, on my machine, I have Entity Framework already installed. And that's why I have this green tick mark here. If I don't have this installed on my machine, then I get a button like this, Install. Okay, so at the moment I don't have jQuery installed, so I have this um, button with install. Once you click that, it should automatically install that package and then it should add a reference to that assembly. So since I have Entity Framework already installed on my machine, look at that, there is a reference added to Entity Framework. Okay, so that's the first step. And the second step is to add employee context.cs class file to the models folder. Let me add this class file and then we'll discuss the purpose of it. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So right click on the models folder, add a class file, and let's call this employee context. So employee context.cs. So let me actually copy a bit of code here and then we'll discuss the purpose of this employee context class. So if you look at this class, employee context class, it's inheriting from another class called DB context. So where is this DB context uh, class present? First of all, we are getting a compilation error. Let's flick, uh, fix uh, the compilation errors. And to do that, let me press control dot. And look at this. This DB context class is actually present in system.data.com entity namespace. So let's go ahead and use that using declaration. So using system.data.entity and this DB context is present within that namespace. All right. So this employee context class inheriting from DB context. So what is the purpose of this employee context class? The purpose of this class is to actually establish a connection to our database. So the stable TBL employee is actually present within the sample database. So this employee context class is going to establish a connection to our database. Okay, Since it's deriving from DB context, this base class is going to do all that for us. And if you look at this employee context class itself, it has got this property, employees, a public property, which is returning um, a DB set of employees. So I'm going to get all the employees that are present in this table TBL employee. And how am I going to get them? Using this property, employees, of this employee context class. OK, so that's the second step. 
What's the third step? Obviously, if this employee context class has to create a connection, it needs to know about the connection string information. And what is the perfect place for connection strings? Web.config file. So the next step is to actually add a connection string to our web.config file. And to the web.config file that's presented within the root directory of our uh, MVC application. So let me open this web.config file. Look at this. I already have a connection string here. And look at the name of the connection string. It's employee context. The name of this connection string matches with the name of our class, employee context. Okay, so when I create an instance of this class, it's going to look for a connection string with that name within web.config file. So we have a connection string there with that name, and then it's going to use this connection string. So obviously, if you look at the connection string itself, the server is dot, meaning the local installation of SQL Server, and then the database name is sample. I am using Windows authentication. The provider name is system.data.sql client, meaning it's SQL Server. Okay, so that's the uh, third step. Add a connection string to the web.config file that's present in the root directory of your MVC application. And the fourth step, which is very important, look at this. By default, the MVC framework, look at the name of our entity, its employee. So by default, the entity framework is going to look for a table with that name employee. But then what's the name of our table? It's actually TBL employee. So we want this entity class to map to our table TBL employee. So how do we do that mapping? Using table attribute. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the table attribute on this class. And how do we use attributes? By using square brackets. So table. And then what's the table to which this class needs to be mapped? TBL employee. OK, and obviously we have a compilation error because we need to import the namespace that, that this attribute is present in. And to do that, just simply press control dot. And look at that. This table attribute is present in system.component.model.dataAnnotations.schema namespace. OK, so we have that using declaration there. So that's our fourth step. And the fifth step, make the required changes to our controller action method. So at the moment, if you look at our controller, employee controller action method, we have the employee data hard coded there. And we don't want to do that. We actually want to retrieve the data from this table TBL employee. So obviously, to do that, the first thing to do is to establish a connection to the database. And how are we going to do that? Remember, we added this employee context class. So just create an instance of this class which is going to automatically use the connection string that's present in the web.config file, create a connection for us. So let's do that. So employee context is equal to new employee context. And then remember, this class, this employee context class has got this property, employees. So employee context dot employees property, which is going to return list of employees, all the employees, that the DB set of employees that's present in this table. But remember, what I want to do is I don't want all employee details. I just want one employee detail. OK, uh, so how am I going to get a specific employee details? What I'm going to do at the moment is to this controller action method, I'm going to pass in a parameter with name ID, which is going to be the employee ID for whom I need the information. So I'm going to filter the employees based on the ID that comes into this controller action method. So I have the list of employees here. From this list, I'm going to get a single employee. Look at that. I'm actually using a link query here. So I'm going to get a single employee. So EMP such that employee object dot employee ID is equal to whatever ID that we are passing into this function. So this is going to return. The single method is going to return. Look at the return type. It's going to return a single employee object. So I'm going to store that within this object reference variable. Let's call it employee. And then what I do, I hand that employee object to this view. Now, 
we will discuss about entity framework in a very great detail in a later video uh, series and similarly we'll also talk about link in a later video session so here we are trying to understand how to populate our model with data from a database table using entity framework okay the specifics of entity framework are beyond the scope of this video but we'll be discussing about them in detail in a later video session all right so we hand over the employee object to the view the view will take the responsibility of rendering that as required all right so that's the fifth step and the final step is to actually you know use this method uh, you know set initializer let me actually paste this method you know in global.asax file and then we'll discuss what is the purpose of that uh, method call so the final step is within global.asax file so this is this application underscore start event handler which gets executed at the beginning you know when when your application first starts and then here i'm going to invoke this uh, you know set initializer method of database class again this database class is present in system.data.entity namespace so let's go ahead and import that so what is the set initializer function going to do for us now look at this the we are actually using this database sample database is an existing database it's not a new database that we are creating we have an existing database and within that we have the stable tbl employee which has got already some sample data now what is the purpose of this set initializer function look at the intellisense it's basically used to initialize our database okay if you don't have the database already created it's going to create a database for you create tables for you and populate them with some sample data but then we already have you know the database the tables and the data so we don't want any initialization strategy so for our employee context object i am passing null specifying that i don't want to have any database initialization strategy so that's the importance of this line okay so that's it these are all the changes that are required so let me now go ahead and run this application so obviously when we first run this application it's going to make use of the home controller and the index action method but we actually want to go into employees controller details action method with an employees controller and if you remember this employees details action method see employee controller uh, it has got details action method and notice this this has got an id parameter so now if you look at the url here i am passing id of one so that will be passed into this controller action method and then this employees property is going to return the database set of employees but then out of them i only want the employee whose id is one because we are filtering here using the single link method okay which is going to return the employee with id one which is then passed to this view so now let me actually press enter there we should get the employee id with one so employee with id one is mark and we have his information there so similarly if i want mary record all you need to do is pass an id of three look at that i get mary's record all right on this slide you can find resources for asp.net c sharp and sql server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day